what's going on YouTube welcome back to this video today we're going to talk about this room named as disgruntled referring to a disgruntled employee case which we're going to investigate in this video so basically this is the story if you read the introduction here it's talking about <coughs> an employee from an IT department of one of our clients the uh, company name is cyber T and they're saying that this employee got arrested on the grounds that they were running a successful fishing operation as a sidekick so your job as um, maybe forensic expert or computer forensic expert let me let me call it this way you have to investigate or maybe instant response as well you have to investigate the machine that the employee was operating from and find out what kind of activities they have uh, performed against all of the IT or the company's IT assets they want to find out what kind of damage they did and what's the extent of damage so this room requires Linux forensic skills so basically Linux forensics is not that different from Windows forensics the only difference is the commands you're going to execute or the tools but the concepts are the same maybe similar to the uh, enumeration commands you execute before or while you are doing privilege escalation so when you try to do perform privilege escalation or the next system or Windows system you have to enumerate the system gather as much information as possible to reach a weakness and here we gather as much information information as possible not to reveal the weakness on the system but to collect information and reveal the intent of the attacker so the process is similarly the same and we have these tasks so these tasks are can be they can be called as a guided uh, investigation to guide you through an investigation here you have the cheat sheet you can download it so that you can um, get a sense of the commands and the category of each or the group of commands under category so the system and all information you have uh, commands used to collect system and OS information you have execution of evidence the related logs or commands to execute and the same here for log files okay after you have downloaded the cheat sheet you can start the investigation so as you can see here this is the machine and it's a complete black command line and oh okay so the first one here's the machine our disgruntled IT user last worked on check if there is anything our client needs to be worried about so as we said earlier this is a guided investigation so through the questions they guide you what you need to investigate what kind of information you want to gather or to collect my advice look at the privileged commands that will run that should get you started so during an investigation first we aim to collect first um, basic system information the time um, the date the users on the system so basic enumeration commands and then here you go to the next step which is as you can see enumerating or finding out what were the commands that will run in a privileged mode so if you want to see the commands that will run we can check the bash rc file right but here we're talking about privileged commands meaning the commands that were executed using sudo so we cannot see these commands in bash rc because the bash rc file is a file that contains the history of the commands but it's under the home directory of that user so we see the commands that were executed uh, by the user itself this, the context of the normal privileged user here we want to see the commands that were executed with sudo so we, what we have to do we have to turn heads to the authentication logs so basically if we cat or let me check the command from the file here so this is the file linux privileged escalation post exploitation forensic whatever you want if you are subscribed to the channel membership uh, the file should be already uh, in google drive you can check it so here let's search for auth.log all right so we have history of sudo commands So this one here cat var log 
it cuts the authentication logs and grip dash i the command and tail here it assumes that we know the commands so sudo commands non sudo commands bash rc file um, let's go back yeah so let's see this one so we go back and here we say the command is sudo or includes sudo and we have a lot of entries so what's the question here the question is we have to find the command uh, that were used to install a package in a privileged mode so there must be an installation word uh, with the with the command so basically what we're gonna do here um, all right so let's do this and then we grip again and install and now we have only these entries so we have this command and install docker wiki the same one docker wiki and the last one is not an, an installation command so there you go this is the command used to install the package in a privilege node and that's the, the answer what was the present working directory when the previous command was run at the same row we can see more information about the command like the user who executed the command and the present working directory was home slash cyber t so it means that the cyber t user apparently they executed this command as root by virtue of using sudo so they installed this package okay and that was the present working directory next keep going our disgruntled it was supposed to install only to only install servers on this computer so look for commands that are unrelated to that which user was created after the package from the previous task was uninstalled so cyber t the disgruntled employee they installed docker wiki okay and of course as root and after the installation has completed another user was created as a result of this successful installation we have to check out what was that user so it means we have to check the logs that show the user which was created now we can check the authentication logs as well so what we can do here instead of a grep dash i sudo we can say grep add user dash i add user because it is the command that's used to add a user and we have one entry here so indeed slash user slash sbin add user it dash admin so it dash admin was the user that was created as a result of this successful installation if you check the timestamp of the package installation so it was done on december 28 okay 6 20 a.m approximately 6 20 a.m morning and we check the timestamp of the user creation command we check it was done after like five minutes right it's done on 6 25 while the successful installation was reported uh, to have taken place at 06 or 6 a.m 6 20 a.m here's 6 25 so there, is, so there is five minutes difference between the two and this is the user a user was then later given sudo privileges when was the sudo words file updated so why this is related so basically the first one here a user was given sudo privileges so a user is given sudo privileges by adding the corresponding user to the sudo words file that's why it is asking you when was the sudo words file updated it's like telling you how to find the answer so you have to check the logs that show any modifications or updates on the sudo words file so with how can we do that we can use the same command but instead of add user we can see vi sudo vi sudo is used to update the sudo words file and we can see this is the command by the way vi sudo that is used to update the sudo words file so whenever you update the sudo words file you use vi sudo and this is the timestamp but as you can see first one was done under ubuntu as a working directory and the next one was done as cyber t 
so that's the answer it is the cyber t one not this one because the first one was done under the context of the ubuntu working directory we are working here or dealing with the cyber t so this is the correct timestamp of the sudoers file so let's go back and follow the chain of the timing chain the first thing that was done 6 20 a.m the package were installed 6 26 or 6 25 approximately a user was created the username is it admin and then after one minute the user was added to sudoers file what happened next a script file was opened using the vi text editor what's the name of this file so here we have to check the logs of the vi text editor we can do that using this command so let's search for vi let's look for logs this is a long file so searching through the file is kind of pain i'm trying to let's see here okay log files yeah this one so vm dot info if we take this command we will be able to find all of the the entries of any file being saved so save as slash bin slash os update so that file was created or a script file apparently the it admin after it has given through the privileges it created this file so if you check now the <coughs> meta information of this file so slash bin slash os update as you can see it was added by root yeah of course because the it admin used sudo to create the file now here this is the answer for the first question uh, wait i think i mixed things up a script file was opened using the vi text editor not saved so this shows the saved files using vi text editor we have to check for the opened files so we can go back to the authentication logs and here we can search for the commands that were executed under vi as you can see vi was used to open a script file called bomb.sh so bomb.sh was created right under the it admin user so that was the script file then the bomb file is a huge red flag while a file is already incriminating it in itself we still need to find out where it came from and what it contains the problem is that the file doesn't exist anymore so it looks like it has been deleted what's the command used to that created the file bump all right so now we know that the user it admin or the uh, disgruntled employee now they are operating with the it admin user so in order to view the commands that were run under this user we can check its bash rc file so cd home it admin cat bash history all right so the first thing they did they checked their privileges or their id and then they used curl to download the bomb script from this ip address and they saved the output name as bomb so this is the command used to create the file or the script the file was renamed and moved to a different directory what's the full path of the file now all right so what they did then again downloaded sudo vi they opened the file and then ls remove bomb and then as you can see they after they removed the script they use sudo nano to open the schedule tasks so if you use the schedule task now they must have added something so cat etc chrome tab no such file or directory okay as you can see if you look through the entries that show the schedule tasks we can see the last row here shows um, a script file named os slash update scheduled to run at 8 a.m morning so eight hour as you can see this is the column 
and this is the minute zero so 8 a.m. morning every day of the month every month every day of the week so that's the script file that they added as you can see after they removed the original script file okay next what's the when was the file from the previous question last modified this one so now we can go up and check what we did earlier so ls-la review the meta information about the file and as you can see it was last modified on this time what's the name of the file that will get created when the file from the first question executes meaning um, this one so we have not checked the contents of this one OS updates let's say so cat bin OS update okay these are comments output and then we have an if statement removing the package and then we have an echo I told you you would regret this good riddance ha 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 and then goodbye so that was the file that was the only file that is supposed to be created after the script is run so this is the file following the fuse so we have a file and a motive the question we have now is how this file will be executed surely he wants it to execute at some point so this is you can find the answer for this question we already covered this by looking at the cron tab we can see that this script is running every day of the month every day of the week at 8 a.m. morning so that was it guys I hope you enjoyed this and I'm gonna see you later